in the Mandalorian episode, The Foundling, audiences were properly introduced to Ahmed Best's Jedi character, Keller and Beck, who had previously only featured on the kids' TV show, Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge. In celebration of Best's return to mainstream Star Wars, I've decided to look into the various Star Wars characters he's played over the years. I hope you enjoy. First up, I'm covering Keller and Beck. Before I start, I'd like to mention that the information about Keller and Beck, which isn't associated with The Mandalorian, comes from the official kids game show, Jedi Temple Challenge. Although Wikipedia considers parts of this show as canon, its canonicity could be questioned due to the nature of the show. Anyway, Keller and Beck, nicknamed the Sabred Hand, was a Jedi Master who supervised Padawans as they went through their Jedi trials. His nickname, the Sabred Hand, actually came from his own time as a Padawan. While looking over the Padawans, Keller and Beck worked with the droids LXR5 and AD3 and served on the ship, Aphelia. During Order 66, he rescued Grogu from Order 66. With the help of some members of the Royal Naboo security forces, and got off of Coruscant. In Jedi Temple Challenge, he had a purple lightsaber with this hilt, but in The Mandalorian, he had a green lightsaber with this hilt. Ahmed Best gave extra detail to Keller and Beck's character in an interview with StarWars.com but this information hasn't been confirmed in any official capacity yet. In the StarWars.com article, it says, Best developed his own view of the Force for Kelleran, and how he experiences the Force. To me, the Force is not just this thing the Jedi tap into when they want to throw something heavy. The Force is this thing that is constantly moving. You're always interacting with it. I see it as like... If you're underwater and you're moving through water, that's what it feels like, moving with the force. He says, so trust in the force means trusting that these ebbs and flows of this feeling you can move with. Best made use of this idea when shooting Keller and scenes. In every single situation of this, I'm trying to tune into this bigger feeling of the force. When I'm getting attacked by clone troopers, I feel them coming. The waves of the force are moving me before they even show up. So I know what's about to happen because I feel the wave and then I can react to the wave. Same thing on the speeder, I can feel the ship coming, so then I can react to it. He says, I see him really having a lot of trust in this ability to serve the force. Separate to the StarWars.com interview, Ahmed Best has also said that Keller and Beck is related to Ahmed Beck, a background character from Attack of the Clones, also played by Ahmed Best. Ahmed Beck is the person I'll be discussing next. Not much is known about Ahmed Beck in canon, but we do know that he was in the Outlander Club, talking to Aveda and a purple Twi'lek. When Obi-Wan and Anakin entered, Following Zam Wessel, Ahmed Beck was in the club to meet with Daniel Faitoni, who he met and patrolled the second floor of the Outlander Conjuring with. Next, I'm briefly discussing Jar Jar Binks. I won't go into much detail here, because Jar Jar is a character which is quite well known and would take a while to cover fully in detail. Jar Jar was a Gungan from Naboo who was banished from Oto Gunga was saved by Qui-Gon Jinn, joined Qui-Gon for a while, became a Gungan military commander, served Naboo as a junior representative alongside Senator Amidala, encouraged the Senate to give Palpatine emergency powers, stood with the Republic in the Clone Wars, even getting involved with combat in the Separatists outside of Coruscant, attended Padme's funeral, was exiled by the Gungans, and became a street performer in Feed, the capital city of Naboo. Jar Jar wasn't the only Gungan Ahmed Best has played though. 
Ahmed Best also voiced Boss Leone in The Clone Wars. Boss Leone was a Gungan who held the title of Boss during The Clone Wars. When Mon Cala was under attack from the Separatists, he sent Gungans to help the Mon Calamari and the Republic forces. Later, he was forced into working for the Separatists for a hypnotic device designed to look like a necklace. This device had been given to Leone by Rish Lu, who supported the Separatists. Leone soon declared war on the people of Naboo. After this declaration, Padme and Anakin flew to Naboo to speak to Leone. When there, Anakin noticed that the necklace was controlling Leone, causing him to act how Rish Lu wanted. Leone then confronted Lu, who tried to control Leone again, but ended up stabbing him. Fortunately, Leone survived, but Lu used the stabbing to convince the Gungans that Leone was dead and that he should be in control. To prevent imminent attack, Jar Jar dressed as Leone and convinced the Gungans to stand down. For the Clone Wars, Ahmed Best also voiced a Toydarian defense minister. This Toydarian defense minister served on Toydaria when Bail Organa and Jar Jar Binks visited, asking for Toydaria's help in getting relief supplies to Ryloth. Due to Toydaria's neutrality, the request that Toydaria be used as a staging ground to supply Ryloth with relief aid was denied. Secretly, King Katunko allowed Bail Organa and Jar Jar to use Toydaria to transport the supplies they'd brought with them, but it is unknown whether Best's character was aware of this decision. Finally, I'm discussing Prisoner 2. I don't actually know who this is referring to, but Ahmed Best is credited as voicing his character in the Clone Wars episode, Gungan Attack. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this dive into the roles of Ahmed Best, and we hope to see you later at Vault Holocron.